Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. It is two, Tuesday. It's four o'clock. Must be time for Guide London. My name's Fiona and I'm one of 600 or so Blue Badge Tourist Guides here in London and we've been bringing you these uh, Guide London broadcasts for just over a year now. So you are very welcome whether you've been with us for that whole year or whether you've recently discovered us. Uh, you can watch these broadcasts on Facebook, on Twitter and on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, then of course you can subscribe as well. And that means not only will all of our new episodes wing their way directly to you, but you can very easily find all of our back catalogue of broadcasts. And we have covered a huge amount of ground in the last year. So if you do watch them all, then you will have no trouble at all in making plans for what you want to do in London when you're able to come and visit us in person. Or in fact, actually, that might not be true. You might have so many ideas that you'll be really have a, a job to make plans and uh, difficult to choose which place you want to go to in London. And so we've got another idea for you today. Uh, we're going to go and look at some art and we're going to look at art which um, is in a, an institution that most visitors, I think if they come to London, they will kind of experience it, it as a gallery. But actually, it's a lot more than that. And uh, we're not going to the V&A today, but the Victoria and Albert Museum, the V&A, a few years ago, ran a big advertising campaign all about their cafe. And they said, we've got a fabulous cafe. And then in little letters, they also kind of said, oh, and, and there's quite a good museum attached as well. Well, today we are going to go and visit the Courtauld, which is very much an institute, but it has a really rather good gallery attached as well. And to tell us all about it, uh, we have my friend and colleague, Gail Jones. Uh, hello, Gail. Hello. Hi. Good. So um, we're going to, uh, like I say, uh, Gail will tell us about the Courtauld and uh, do let us know if you're watching live, do put comments and questions in as we're going along. Gail can, can come back to questions later on. Um, do tell us where in the world you're watching from. And if you do know the Courtauld already, then let us know if you have a favourite piece or a particular painting uh, that you know is in the Courtauld uh, or something you're looking forward to coming back to and visiting again uh, when, when everything's all opened up, um, then let us know that as well. And it'd be lovely to know your favourites uh, as we go along. So I will take myself away and uh, say over to you, Gail. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to what is one of my favourite places to visit in London, and it's called the Courtauld. Um, and as Fiona was saying, it is um, everybody knows it as a gallery, but it actually started as an institute for people to learn the history of art. And until it was founded, we did not have in London or in England anywhere, a university where you could study the history of art. Now it is a, a university, the Institute in its own right, and the alumni that have uh, gone through there are now curators of art galleries, museums, um, all around the world. They start their teaching from uh, family school children, and then you can go right up to PhD and learn about curating and um, uh, how to uh, conserve um, the artworks as well. So it is a wonderful um, building and gallery to visit. So I'm going to tell you the story of how it started. And the person who started it, um, it's named the Courtauld after a young man called Sam Courtauld. Oh, sorry, I missed this. <laughs> um, I should say I was going to talk about the most famous picture that's here, and it's called the Bar at the Folie Berger. Missed that one out. Um, this is a massive picture. It's about two foot by four foot or um, a meter by meter and a half, roughly. Um, and it uh, is a, a very ambiguous sort of picture. Um, if you look straight at it, you see this uh, girl serving uh, in the Folie Berger bar. Behind her is a mirror. And normally we should see the mirror up reflection directly behind her, but it's off at an angle. And this was um, very common in paintings by Manet. Um, he liked question marks in his pictures. And a lot of the paintings that we have in the Courtauld 
they have question marks. There's lots of things that you can uh, say about them or, or think about them. Now, the museum was started, as I, I said a bit too soon, by this man. This is Sam Courtauld, Samuel Courtauld, when he was a 17-year-old. He came from a French family. They were Huguenots. They came from La Rochelle in France originally, and they came over in the 18th century to England. Their trade in those days was silversmiths, and they made um, beautiful silver objects. And there is in the Courtauld, there are displays of some of the silver made by the Courtaulds. 19th century, the family moved into a different business. They started making silk, and especially black silk crepe. And then in the 20th century, they started producing artificial silk, um, otherwise known as rayon or viscous. And these are some adverts and the trademark from their 20th century fabrics. And it was in the 20th century that they really started to make money. And that was when um, Sam Courthold took over as general manager and, and later chairman. So he became enormously rich with the company. Um, he got married in 1901. His wife was interested in art as well. Her name was Elizabeth. And his interest in art started on their honeymoon. They went to Florence and he was looking at medieval paintings and they really touched him. And when he was buying paintings himself later in life, that was what he was looking for, paintings that reached out to him. Um, maybe uh, advised to buy them by um, critics, but it was really his personal choice and Elizabeth's personal choice. They began buying their artwork in the 1920s. And um, it was in 1917, Sam saw an exhibition when he saw his first Impressionist art. And then 1922, he saw his first Cezanne. And after that, he was smitten. He bought 11 um, exam, uh, Cezanne oils. The collection has a lot of drawings and sketches by uh, sketches and, and watercolors by Cezanne as well. This um, painting is from a series that Cezanne made uh, called Card Players. And it was a series of paintings made over a, a few years. And it features peasants in different attitudes in a bar, smoking pipes, playing cards. Um, Elizabeth, her favorite painting in the early days was by Monet. And this is it. This was bought uh, for, with her in mind. It's called Antibes. And Monet spent um, four months in the spring time in uh, the south of France. And what hit him in the south of France was the light. Uh, there's just the luminosity. If anybody's been there, there is a special light in the Mediterranean. And the blue, uh, blue everywhere. And Antibes, this picture really um, just says that. Um, Sam then um, began to uh, think about donating money to the national collection. He was beginning his private collection, but he was disappointed that in the National Gallery in the Tate, we didn't have really Impressionist or any late 19th century, 20th century art. The trustees of those museums were into old masters. So he gave uh, £50,000 to the National Collection and to make sure that it was going to be sent, spent on sort of paintings he liked, he made himself head of a committee to decide what was they were going to buy. And so one of the paintings they bought, which is in the National Gallery, is Van Gogh's Sunflowers. And another one also in the National Gallery is The Bather's Anier by Seurat. And at the same time, when he's buying for the National Collection, um, Porto was using advice um, to try and get the best uh, of those artists' work, but he was buying, still buying for himself. So he has in his own collection, Seurat, and this is another one that Elizabeth liked. Um, this is the woman powdering um, herself. And it, when you go to the gallery, because you must go, um, you've got to see these pictures in person. This one is, is what we call pointillism. It's little tiny dots. The image is made up of little tiny dots. They've got another painting in um, the Courtauld by Seurat, and that one, it's the same sort of um, idea, but it's little dashes, this one, and they're using um, real contrasting colours juxtaposed against each other to create the shadows, to create the smoke from the chimneys. Um, they have to be seen in real life, the Seurat, I think, anyway. Um, we've also got Van Gogh. 
in their collection. And this is a portrait, a self-portrait by Van Gogh. This is after he's cut his ear off. He is in a really down place now. He's had a fight with his best friend, Gauguin. Gauguin has gone off in a huff. Uh, he's cut off his ear. And you can see from the sort of acidic colors that he's used, um, very unnatural, quite disturbing. Uh, you get the feel, uh, Van Gogh's feeling comes out in his painting. Um, the um, people that were helping Sam uh, to found the Institute were these two gentlemen. The one on the left is a man called Viscount Lee of Fairham. He started his career as a soldier. He was a diplomat over in America and he married in America the daughter of a New York banker. So he became very rich and he started collecting art. And the one on the right is a man called Sir Robert Witt and he collected drawings, he lived nearby, and he uh, was a politician. And all three, Sam, uh, Viscount Lee, and Sir Robert Witt, they all wanted to found an institute um, so that everybody could study the history of art. In England, you could study art itself, learn to be a painter or a sculptor, but to study the history of art, um, then there was nowhere. They went around uh, the world trying to find places uh, that might be a model for their new institute. And the place that it's really based on is the Fogg Museum at Harvard University. And so what the Courtauld became uh, was uh, an institute where you could study art, but right next to the students in the same rooms um, were these fabulous collection of paintings. And the paintings were also open for the public to see. And where they were first housed is this building. This is Hume House, which is in Portman Square in London. It is a beautiful building by 18th century architect called Robert Adams. And it was um, Portold's home. But sadly, his wife died. And after her death, he, he decided he would just found the Institute. He stopped really buying paintings now. Um, he kind of lost um, his interest in buying paintings. And he donated half of his collection to, um, as a founding uh, collection of the Institute. Um, one of the people that was advising him on buying paintings was this man. This is Roger Fry. And Roger Fry was uh, a well known art critic in this country. He's the person who coined the name post impressionism. And he was the person who pointed um, Courtauld in the direction of Cezanne and was um, a real proponent of Cezanne's um, paintings. He was also. Um, keen on British artists and British art. And a little way north of the Courtauld, not too far away, is the district Bloomsbury and Fitzrovia. And that is where Fry began the Omega workshops. And this is where young British artists could um, practice their trade and hopefully um, find an outlet to sell their work. And the embroidery, this is an embroidered um, chair seat. Uh, it was done, we think, by Vanessa Bell, who was a member of uh, the Omega Group and who um, was the sister of Virginia Woolf. So this Bloomsbury Fitzrovia group are part of what we call the Bloomsbury set. So what you can do is uh, walk around the area where they lived and then um, have a tour of uh, the Courtauld to see the work they did. Um, this is um, part of another collection, which is in the Courtauld. It's by Gauguin. And there are lots of Gauguin's in um, the Courtauld from his early period, from when he was in Brittany to when he went to Tahiti. And this is one that I particularly like. Um, it's very somber. I said before that the Courtauld has lots of paintings that make you think um, and ask questions. And this one, you can see this girl, she's looking behind her and she's the only brightness is that pillow that she's resting her head on. And then behind her are two people talking. And in the background is a raven. And the title, one of the titles, the English title at least, is Nevermore. And Edgar Allan Poe wrote a poem, The Raven, that only says one word, nevermore. Gauguin said, this painting's got nothing to do with the poem, but I'm, I'm not so sure. He, he knew the poem. It, it was recited to him the day before he left for Tahiti when he um, did this painting. So I think perhaps um, the poem's got a little more to do with it than he said. Um, this painting is uh, 
much older. It's not impressionist. This is 18th century. It's by Thomas Gainsborough and it's a portrait of his wife. And Gainsborough, when he was painting, he, he used to concentrate on the faces and do the in detail. But the dresses, the clothes, the lace, he used to do with very big brush strokes, a very long handled brush actually. And it gives an impressionist field a hundred years before impressionism. Once when I was visiting the Courtauld, I saw this painting hung next to another one called La Loge, which is impressionist, it's by Renoir. And what really struck me um, is, if you look at the expression on the two women's faces, the mouth, it's the same, expression the eyes the same sort of expression and it's sad i hadn't noticed margaret gainsborough looking sad until i saw her next to um mini her name is the the model in la loge and maybe the lady in la loge is sad because the man behind her he's got his opera glasses out they're at the theater um she is looking at us the stage is down below her but he is looking up um so what's he looking at maybe um his her replacement Um, this is from Viscount Lee's collection. In um, the Courtauld, it's known for its impressionist and post-impressionist work and, and, and 20th century work, but that isn't all. It has um, old masters and furniture as well. And this is from 1472, and it's one of a pair of wedding chests. These were gifts from the groom to the wife, and it was where the family bed linen and houseware, house linen would be stored. Painted on it is normally a moral um, which should be instructing the couple on how to behave. And this is very rare, this pair, because they're intact. A lot of these chests, um, the paintings got separated from the casing. Um, but this is intact. And also, we know whose wedding it was made for. It was an important wedding for two Florentine families. Um, the Morellis and the Nellis. Uh, we have the documentation, so it's a, it's a really rare treasure. Um, another work from Viscount Lee's collection is this painting by Lucas Cranach the Elder. And uh, this is one I particularly like. It is, I think, because it's quite cheeky. I don't know if you can see because it's, it's little, but if you look closely at, it's Adam and Eve, and if you look at Eve, can see she's looking really quite gorgeous hanging onto that tree and um, she's look on her face is very knowing very minxy um, and she's handing the apple to Adam he obviously hasn't had a bite yet because he's just completely befuddled she totally um, is outstripping adult Adam um, um, no pun intended um, so I particularly like that one now where you'll see that works today is here at Somerset House. 1989, um, Hume House, the lease was expiring and uh, new premises were needed. The collection had grown um, over the years. And so this building uh, was used. And this is an old office block. It was built in the 18th century for the government. And it is beautiful inside. We have some wonderful staircases that so you can visit the courthold and see their fabulous staircase. They've got lifts as well, so don't worry if you don't do stairs. Um, but you can also wander around the Somerset House and see some of the other um, sites. This is the Nelson Stairs, and these are six flights of stairs. Each flight is different and you can maybe see the staircases are going across the room they sort of fly over each other and at the top of the building was the navy um, board and this is the admin uh, for the navy in the 18th century this is where they started uh, they were ordering ships and ordering ships provisions and admiral lord nelson would be present at the meetings um, and that is why these stairs are called the naval stairs now, at the moment, the court hold is closed. It, it's been closed because of COVID, but actually not, um, not because of that. It's closed because um, there is a new project going on I'm going to tell you about. But in the meantime, to whet your appetite, we have a fantastic website. The court hold website is brilliant and it's being updated and changed all the time. If 
This is the landing page. If you click on gallery, for example, then it brings up the second page where you can go into a, a virtual tour and it'll take you through the rooms to look at um, the best known work. You can look um, at Samuel Courtauld's life. If you go into the collection, you can look at um, different ages of collections in detail and you can even take a tour with Bill Nighy, um, the actor from Love Actually and um, For Weddings and a Funeral. The Courtauld, uh, the website also talks about the courses that they are, are offering so you can book on just an hour's lecture, some you pay for, some are free, or you can book up to do um, BA, an MA, or even a PhD. Um, the study is still going on. They're based um, while it's closed at um, King's Cross. Now, this is the project name. Um, it's called Court Old Connects. And what they are planning to do is really to reintegrate the Court Old. Um, it, when it moved to Somerset House, the institute became a little bit separated from the gallery. But looking at this wing that we of the building, this is where the portholes are. The right hand side, as you're looking, is where the institute are based, and the left hand side is where the gallery is based. And they want now that this should be um, joined together. That that should be much. There we go. That's better if you can hear me. Um, I, I think Gail has just disappeared in a, a puff of smoke, which um, I don't know if it's the first time that this has happened to us completely while we're in the midst of a, of a broadcast during this year. I think it might be. So, ah, uh, but she might, she might well be coming back. Hold on. I'm really on. sorry. I, I, touch, <laughs> I keep forgetting that I'm not touching the, 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 the uh, there you go. Well, that's all right. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it was that and not that your so internet sorry, that connection disappeared. No, completely. it was I'm trying to touch things and I've uh, clicked myself off. So what I was trying to say is Fair that um, the Institute now is on the right hand side of the building and the galleries on the on the left. And what they want to do is connect the two. So they are building underground better connections. There will be much better study rooms. There'll be much better facilities. There'll be access for the students, but there'll also be much better access for people coming from outside because they want to welcome in visitors like you and me to come and look at the art collection. And when you come in, you're going to see these fabulous 18th century rooms with um, this beautiful collection that they've got, the old masters. And what they are uh, doing is transforming the top floor. At the moment, it is um, partitioned up and they've blocked off the access to the 18th century feet. And what they want to do is bring that all back. So the partitions are being taken down and the great room is being restored into a huge um, gallery area. And it's the top floor where we're going to have the Impressionists and the Post-Impressionists and the 20th century artwork. So um, the, the, the Courthold is due to be opening again later this year. Exact date, um, we will um, update as soon as we can, perhaps on our um, website and keep in touch with the Courthold website. But later this year, it is going to be open and it's going to be fabulous. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there. And I hope you enjoyed that little taster. I certainly enjoyed that little taster and absolutely it makes me want to go running back there to see <laughs> those fabulous paintings and like you say particularly the impressionists and things you know Sura you want to stand really close and then you want to move back and look at it and go in close again and yeah things. yeah um uh Larissa was saying Larissa say love the impressionist painting a pleasure to see so many of it many of them at the uh, at the court hold um Larissa is from uh, Argentina, no, Canada, Ontario, Canada, Canada. Larissa is from. Uh, but we do also have people listening in from Edmonton and from Argentina and uh, Exmoor as well and, uh, and the Wirral. So we've got, yes, quite a nice spread of people. Um, well, actually, I should, oh, sorry, Fiona. Um, I just forgot to say, actually, because part of this Courtauld Connects project is to connect the Courtauld up with some of the areas where they had factories. So they had factories in Canada one time. Um, they've also um, had in Northern Ireland, 
And while it's closed for refurbishment, a lot of the collection has gone to those spaces um, for exhibitions. And they hope to continue that afterwards as well, that they will connect with um, the places where the Courtauld had its had its roots and its Sorry, that's, that's, no, no, that's, that's a good, good sort of use of the opportunity while the, mm. the main gallery is closed to, to uh, yeah, hopefully yeah. some some of those places they've had a chance to look at it. It's, it's been open yeah. enough. Um, uh, and for the we did, yeah, sorry. No, I was going to say we did have a question in from from Tony. Tony was asking what became of Hume House. Um, uh, Hume House has become a, a club. It was bought as a private members club. And in fact, I know when Madonna was in London, she held a party there uh, when she lived here. But um, it's now a private members club, very exclusive. Yes, excellent. Well, um, thank you, thank you so much, Gail. That was was fabulous. Um, Pleasure. And I was going to say that, as ever, if you want to get in touch with Gail, then one of the the good ways to do it is to have a look at the Guide London. Uh, website which uh, is here um, and uh, here on the uh, on the home page if you want to find uh, a guide then you can just go up to the search up here if you type in Gale then uh, you will you'll find all of the uh, there we go uh, just just in fact only this Gale Jones pops up so um, very easy to, to track her down and um, the other option as well if you go to the top and click on the guide match then uh, on this page you can scroll down and you can fill in a form about when you're visiting and what you want to do so you could choose a public a walking tour public transport a driving tour a cycling tour uh, or indeed at the moment a virtual tour and i think guides uh, that's going to be something that's going to carry on um even when uh, when everything opens up more and when traveling is easier there's a lot of guides i think who are going to be quite happy doing virtual tours indefinitely um, and then you could for example click on the museums and galleries box as well and then fill in your details and that will get sent off to three different guides um, who should uh, should match what you want to do and they will get in touch with you so that's another good way to find uh, find a guide in London through uh, through us um, I'm just having a look down another question oh peter allman says is that the somerset house that i connect with birth records um it is um it was used for births marriages and deaths records yes yes they're not there anymore they have moved to to um yeah. so it, it was all government different government departments at one time yeah yeah and i think you're right peter although they i think they moved out to queue quite a long time ago but well, I mean, like, I know, 20 years ago or something like that. But an awful lot of us absolutely think of Somerset House as births, marriages, deaths, uh, hatches, matches and dispatches uh, is what used to be uh, kept records of, of there. So. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. And big thank you to Gail for um, inviting us, even if it's just virtually, into the, uh, the Court Old Gallery for today. And uh, we'll be back next week with more exciting topics. Um, so I'll see you all again next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.